Attitude. Don't leave it your attitude to chance. Be aware of what it is. Decide before you begin preparing that you are on a mission to change lives. Why are you there? I guess that's a question. I would not do a seminar for an organization because I don't want to be there because it's just the money. I mean, I mean, I like the material, making a difference. So I'm there because I get a chance to meet more people and to make lives, to change the lives of more people. I'm on a mission. What can you do to serve? Have an attitude, service. How can you inspire them? You know, when you have enough experience, and I'm sure if you're teaching first year apprentice or second or third or fourth year, you know, it takes a little while to kind of get your legs to understand how this thing works. So in the beginning, you know, you're just having all this stuff happening at one time and you're just trying to make it for the class. You know, all this great instructor stuff is kind of like happening slowly, but it's, it's going to catch up with you there. And that is that eventually at some point you, 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 you can relax on the mechanical parts of it and then now you can start focusing on the part of giving. And I think most instructors have been blessed those of us that are presenting and those who have the leaders, we've been so blessed. And like Eric, you said, you know, a success requires a successor. Well, that's what we're all about. That's what I'm about. And that's what everybody else is about. We're, we're trying to help the next guy, the next generation to make the difference. Do you want the students to learn? Well, then teach them. Do you want to have fun? Figure it out a way. Make it have fun. Expect a high level of professionalism. You'll get it. That is something that later on we're going to be talking about the dynamics in the classroom. But for sure, in my classroom, I truly expect you to perform. And it doesn't mean you have to do a whole lot. I mean, it just means that you pay attention, get engaged, be respectful. You know what I mean? You know, participate. But even in my class, if you come to my seminars in Florida, when I have, you know, five, 600 people in my class, and you dress inappropriately, I'm going to tell you. I'm just giving you feedback here, buddy. You know what I mean? You're coming to a Mike Holt seminar. You get a chance to network a whole bunch of other people all over the place here. You don't know who you're going to meet. Wearing a baseball hat, shorts, cut-off shirts, I mean, a, you know, a muscle shirt, not a good career move. Now, that would could say you're not being sensitive. I mean, that surely is offensive, and it does bother people. But I only had one person one time never come back to my class that I know of, and he was an instructor. Brian, were you there in that oh, class? I was there. I yeah. had a person that was going to present, a, a presenter at my class, and I forgot how it went around, and I said something about make sure you wear a tie, because he didn't wear a tie at the trainer-trainer we class. We're talking about dress. We're talking about dress. And uh, when we get at the dress part, the trainer-trainer part, and he said to me, uh, well, this is the way I always dress. He had a polo shirt. He had a polo, he had a polo on. He had a polo on, nice polo shirt, which would be okay for a classroom, but if you're teaching between three to 500 people, 600 people at a Mike Holt seminar, because I'm having you speak on a topic, uh, I need you to, to meet our standard. And that was a, wear a tie, at least, you know, preferably a, a tie and a jacket. He says, I don't wear ties. He says, oh, he says, I didn't bring a tie. I said, well, okay, you know, you can go pick up a tie anywhere. He goes, I don't wear ties. I said, well, you know, you can pick up a tie anywhere. He goes, no, you don't understand. I'm not wearing a tie. Nobody tells me how to dress when I'm making a presentation. And I'm thinking he's joking with me. I said, well, if, you, if, you, if you're going to teach at my class, you can wear a tie. He goes, well, then I'm not teaching your class. And, and I was a little taken aback, and I'm thinking, oh, no, this is not really happening here, that this guy's actually telling me he's not going to be wearing a tie, and we have him on the agenda, and he's not going to teach the class because he's not wearing a tie. What? He didn't show up to the class. Didn't teach the class. Didn't wear a tie. Well, he actually, if you remember, he actually got mad and left the okay. Train the Trainer seminar. He, he, he said, finish. Steve Jobs doesn't wear a tie, and I don't wear a tie. That's what he said. That's what he said. <laughs> yeah, Steve Jobs doesn't wear a tie, and I don't wear a tie. I'm like, well, Steve Jobs is not teaching before Michael classes. I mean, you know, <laughs> but he would, but it might be different. I don't know. So I expect a high level of professionalism from my students, and I'll get it. Let them know what you expect. Take a look at the classroom setting. In other words, it's a big package here. The dress. This is the part in the program, which would have been like the first day, right, Brian, that we're talking about dress code, where he says, I'm out of here. Yep. What you wear communicates a self-portrait. Take a look at this particular picture here. Look at my sleeves. They're rolled up. No jacket. 
Now, everything I do is with a strategy. I would never come into a classroom without a jacket and roll-up sleeves. Once I feel comfortable, once I feel that they're comfortable with me, I will usually do that at the earliest on a two-day program. The earliest will be the afternoon of the first day. Kind of relaxing there. We kind of get back. And I'll take my jacket off. Generally, that will be the morning of the second day. Take off the jacket on the second day. Then by mid-break or something like that, I'll kind of roll up the sleeves. It kind of communicates what? We're, we're, kind, of, we're kind of relaxing here. We're just, you know, we're kind of like bros. You know, we're, we're connecting here, you know. So I'm going in with a dress. Let's take a look at the dress. What you wear communicates a self-portrait. Now, I, I, when I get into this area here, people watching this DVD, I have found this is probably the one of the areas that most inflammatory areas that I have a tendency to say that people, some people really are very sensitive to the extreme that we've seen, that I've actually experienced. So if I really upset you and piss you off, I want you to do it sincere in my heart. I don't care. Okay? I don't care. You need to dress properly. You're the instructor? Well, Mike, you don't understand. I get off the job, this, that. I don't care. There's no excuse. Go take a shower. Don't take a shower. Bring a change of clothes. Wipe yourself down. Make yourself cleaned up a little bit inside there. Carry it in your bag. Then unload it and do what you got to do. But no. Well, Mike, you understand. I want to be like one of the guys. No, you're not one of the guys. If you're one of the guys, you wouldn't be asked to be making the teaching. You're the leader. You are taking them to where you want them to go. You're demonstrating it. Now, how did Mike Holt start his classes? Cut off shorts. Work boots, dirty, j dirty T-shirt, coming from a job, teaching my classes. Well, that's where I was. And honestly, I like going in with cut-off shorts and work boots and a dirty T-shirt because it's comfortable. But as time has gone by and I've grown, I realize, listen, buddy, <coughs> you need to wear a tie, okay? You put a nice shirt on. You need to put on a jacket. You need to let these people, you're the leader. They need to follow you, and you need to inspire them. So when we get into this dress code thing, what I'm going to try to do is ask you to, each time you watch this DVD, take your dress code up one notch. And let's take a look at the system I'm talking about here. We know it, what, it, what you communicate is your, what you wear communicates your self-portrait. <clears throat> Don't dress down. You're not their buddy. You're the leader. Have someone with good fashion sense help you with clothing design decisions. I mean, those of you guys that have been watching this DVD as it started before, it's not on the actual recording. It was before the recording because it's live streaming. I, I had ties. My wife picks the color of the shirt. She picks the, my ties. She makes sure she gets the right shirt. Every single thing. I, I'm not, this is dressing. I, I like nice clothes, but I prefer to wear, you know, comfortable clothes. So my wife picks my suits, my shirts, my ties. No, 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 you're not. Who are you speaking to? Um, I'm going to be talking to a bunch of engineers. Well, how many of them are in class? Um, there's going to be probably about 25 of them. Where in the country? Well, they're going to be in Chicago. You think if I'm doing 25 engineers in Chicago for 25 engineers in Chicago, it might be different than if I'm teaching 25 electricians in, let's say, Tampa? In other words, also New York City? Some parts of the country, oh, I did a seminar. Oh, I'm going to New York and I'm out in some nuclear power plant somewhere. You know, nuclear power plant people, the engineers, do you know they have no code book? Sure. Zero. All the engineers in nuclear power plant, there is no code book in the entire facility. I'm doing a code change seminar for engineers on nuclear power plant and they have no code book. I'm like, how is that possible? I go to New York. And it's a winter time. I wear a black jacket with black pants and a, you know, and a, and a shirt and everything like that. I get there. Um, Brian McPartland, Joseph McPartland, which is junior from Joe McPartland up in New York. His son has me do a conference up there for the power plant. He kind of, he did. And then he has his, everybody from the McPartland's organization, New York City, Manhattan structure. Everybody picks me up with a suit on. I come in with a black 
leather little thin jacket on. Oh my gosh, was I, I was so embarrassed that I was not the best dressed person. I was the worst dressed person inside there. I could not believe that. Brian. Well, I just, I want to interject here. You know, years ago, you've always said when you walk in the room, no one else in the room should be dressed better than you're dressed. And so, you know, like even this morning, it was kind of funny. I walk in and I, I brought my jacket because I didn't know. And I didn't want everybody else to have a jacket and I didn't have a jacket. You know, and I'm walking in here and Ryan's like, hey, you're not planning on wearing that on the video, are you? Because nobody else has jackets. And I was like, no, I'm not going to wear it. I just don't want to take a chance that I'm the only guy without a jacket in the whole place, you know. <clears throat> exactly. Right. Well, and and I'll, I'll be honest with you. You, know, you and I were speaking on the phone the other day. My, you know, I, I, I teach as my main source of income. I do you know, eight-hour presentations. But when I'm not teaching, I'm usually working at home. And when I need to get work done, if I've got a, you know, I, I write books with you. If I've got a deadline on a book, I wake up in the morning to go to work in my basement. I shave. I put on a suit. You know, sometimes I'll put on a three-piece suit because you feel different. When you put it on, you know, Donald Trump got asked, why do you have a signature series of ties? And he said, I like ties. And I'll tell you why, because it feels good to wear a tie. And women that are with men that wear ties, they feel good that they're with a man that's wearing a tie. And it's true. You, it, it does, you become a different, I didn't own a tie 10 years ago. I didn't know how to tie one. I'd never tied one in my life, right? Now you will never, ever see me at a classroom without a suit. Ever, you well, know, because it, it, it's part of the uniform for me, and and it, your armor. When I put that thing on, I you it you get a new gear exactly in the transmission. Right. You know, you you need it. I, I need put it. on. I don't wear rings because I'm doing sports, so mm -hmm. I, I put on my ring. This ring I can't because my finger is bloated up from a mountain biking crash, so I can't put that ring on. Okay, I get my watch. Okay, a really mm -hmm. nice watch. I put on my shirt. Yep. I put my. Um, Collar ties in, get a nice tie on. I got my jeans, I mean, I got my pants on. I got my shoes on. I put my jacket on, and I'm like, let me tell you something. Yep. It's like Superman coming out of a closet. It's yep. like, okay, right. I, 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 psychologically something happens mm -hmm. when I prepare like that to go into the setting that I'm going to be going into. Yep. So those of you that are like, ah, I wear a baseball hat, and listen, okay, all right. But you could do better. You know, take the hat off at least, right? Then we can work on maybe instead of a dirty T-shirt, how about a dirty polo shirt? You know, and we can kind of work our way up and keep growing you up inside here, Ryan? Well, I, I, I can't imagine going to a class as, as a student, and, and I have done this, going to a class as a student and walking in and not knowing who the teacher is. That just, that's incomprehensible to me as, as, as an instructor now. That's incomprehensible. When, when somebody walks in, I want them to know that I'm the one teaching the class. I want, you know, that to me that's part of taking charge of the entire thing. Well, you know, unrelated to this, but I'm always pushing dress. Um, I was talking to somebody where he was an electrical contractor, electrician. He started going to the job, even, everybody should dress better, okay? He started going to the job and he started dressing better. And he found out that the inspector and all these high power people coming to the job went to him because they thought, yeah. Was that you, Brian? Or the yeah. story? Yeah, so it was actually when I was a helper. Okay. And uh, so the journeyman I was apprenticing under wanted me. I bought a new tool bag and all brand new tools. I probably had two thousand dollars worth of tools in my little bag. Everything you could imagine. And since I've been fifteen or sixteen years old, I always worn long sleeves. I just like long sleeve shirts. Makes me feel good. And I always wear khaki slacks to work. And so we went up several jobs. We'd go up to the door and, and knock on the door, and he was in his company polo shirt with a pair of slacks. And when the people answered the door, even though he was the older guy and I was the younger guy, they would immediately turn to me and start talking to me. It drove him crazy. And he couldn't figure out why. And I said, well, it's easy. I said, I got the shirt on, man. I said, I look like I'm in charge. And I'm the one wearing all the tools. He had me wear the tools because he didn't want to carry his. He wanted to use my tools. <laughs> That's why I was carrying the tools, but it backfired on him. It's exactly what it does. It puts you in a position of authority immediately. You, I, we didn't talk about that, but we got to get in the textbook. The dress. It puts you in a position, it can, mm -hmm. right, if you dress properly, right, in a position of authority. Absolutely. Eric? Yeah, when I lived in Houston, uh, I, was on, on, I was in a lot of juries, at least one jury per year. And so I, I was in so many juries, I started doing some experimentation. 
I said, okay, well, I'm going to wear a tie to the jury. First thing they do is they select the jury foreman. Yes. Okay, without any conversation. Right. So I found that whenever I wore a tie, I was selected the jury foreman, and what I didn't, whoever else, the best dressed person in the room, invariably, was the jury foreman. Yep. Good point. All right, let's continue on now. So you'll be a great instructor, right? We're going to start with the dress. It's a pretty simple thing. Polo shirt with a collar, dress slacks with a belt, and leather shoes. That is absolute minimum. Yeah. That's, so if you're not doing that, then you need to do this. Okay, if you are doing that, well, then you know what? Take the polo shirt, flip it out, start putting on a dress shirt. Well, I am wearing a dress shirt. Okay, if you're doing a dress shirt, okay, then put on a tie and possibly a sports coat. If you are doing a tie, but maybe not a sports coat, okay, well, then now go to the suit because you keep elevating yourself. <clears throat> Take it one level up from wherever you're at right now. Because I'm not asking you to, well, you don't understand. What, I, listen, trust me. <laughs> you raise your dress code up at least one notch, it'll be noticed. You raise it up a couple notches. Before you know it, you start going in there with a tie, whatever this, it, it, just a tie alone with a nice shirt on, automatically commands a huge amount of authority. I couldn't even imagine you teaching a class without that. So professional. Here's a person back here without it. I didn't mean to do this, but it would be a good idea to get a picture with multiple people up there, right? Take a look. In other words, if you had, take, take the face off, take this person's body, take another person's body, and then get one of the guys in the class that just has a polo shirt on, another guy who has a t-shirt, and line them all up to take off all and everything else. You'd instantly will focus on the person that shows the professionalism. Don't wear... That'd be a perfect picture of not the wear. Nice pair of jeans and a polo. That's great. But if, you, if you're wearing shorts and a dirty T-shirt, well, that's a great one, right? Then wear, now you're wearing pants and a clean T-shirt. You know what I mean? So it all depends where. Don't wear jeans and a T-shirt, running shoes, scuffed and dirty work boots. You know, take it up a notch. Empathy. Some instructors never really understand the challenges of their students. Yes. Well, I, that's the way I was in the 80s. I could care less. I was just doing my thing, teaching my class. I was just giving you the crumbs, telling you what it was, and then getting out of there and going barefoot water skiing or whatever else I was doing. So wasn't a very good instructor at all there. But a good instructor will understand the challenge of the students. Get inside the mindset of your student and look at the world through their perspective. Find out what's happening in their lives. Here's a person, you know. Obviously, you know, person's in a chair. I mean, a, in a, an electric cart. So get down to their level. Hang out. You see everybody's kind of up and going and doing their own thing. I'm not a, I will never leave the front of my class. Lunchtime, break time. Uh, I'm the last person to go to lunch. So if I go to a... If I'm doing a, a speaking engagement and they're having lunch, everybody goes to the lun lunch break first. I will be the last person going to the buffet. And then I'll be the first person leaving the buffet. I mean, after eating, getting back to the front of the class to be ready to go. I'm there first thing in the morning before the class starts. I'm there at every single break. People say, don't you go to the bathroom? I'm thinking, apparently not, you know, because I don't. And at the end of the day, I'm there the last person that, that goes there. So that is being empathetic. That is being available. That's making sure that you understand what's going on. You know, when I see a person like this here, and I've known this guy for probably you know, 30 years, and I can't remember exactly what's going on, if it was a temporary or diabetes or whatever the case may be, but, you know, we've got to connect with everybody. We've got to understand. We've got to help this person out.